Welcome to the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry channel. I am Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree KCCH, Scottish Rite Freemason, your host here on the channel. Do me a favor, give us a thumbs up on the video because it really does help us make more videos. What happens is the more thumbs up you get, the higher up in the YouTube algorithm you go, the more people see it, and we make more and more videos. So we're doing this so we can bring you even more great Scottish Rite and Masonic content. So please, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with a friend, that would be really cool. And of course, turn on that little notification bell over there. When you turn that on, it's gonna make sure that you never miss one of our videos. So please do that. If you're a Freemason, by all means, drop a comment below. Shout out your lodge, your valley, your York Rite chapter, Demolay, Job's Daughters, Rainbow, Grotto, Shrine, whatever you got, shout it out in the comment section below. We love to hear from our brothers all over the country, or as we Freemasons say, wheresoever dispersed. I've gotten a lot of email, a lot of comments, a lot of questions about the brand new television show, National Treasure edge of history and this is a continuation of the two national treasure films national treasure and national treasure book of secrets sadly our hero your friend and mine nicholas cage is not reprising his role as benjamin gates in this national treasure series which begins streaming on disney plus a week from today so i'm recording this december 7th 2022 there is going to be a two episode premiere released on disney plus streaming platform a week from today and so a lot of people have said, is there going to be masonic stuff in it well we haven't known too much there has been a trailer and the trailer has a few hints so i thought to sort of whet our appetite for the upcoming tv series what we would do is take a look at the trailer and see what we can find in there that might have some Masonic content in it. Now, I do want to say very specifically, we have to tread lightly when using clips from the television show because it belongs to Disney. It's their intellectual property. A lot of people put a lot of work in on this, and we certainly don't want to steal their thunder, but we do want to look at some of those Masonic elements or potentially Masonic elements and see what they're being used for to tell the story and then what their real and practical application is. So that's sort of our goal here. We did this very same thing about a year ago with Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol, which was streaming on Peacock, which is the NBC streaming platform. And we worked pretty closely with those folks. They they worked with us ahead of time. Author Dan Brown, he he's done a lot of things for the House of the Temple, for the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. He's a wonderful, wonderful guy, very generous with his time and his talent, and he allowed us to do that along with the producers of the show. However, we don't have that same exact relationship with the folks over at Disney, so we're going to just tread very lightly as we look at some of these Masonic elements. First, let's take a look at what they call the slug line. This is the one or two sentence description of what the show is going to be about. Jess Valenzuela, a 20 year old dreamer, sets off on an exploration to discover the mystery of her family history and, with the help of her friend, seeks to recover historical lost treasure. It looks like the bad guy in this is going to be portrayed by Catherine Zeta-Jones. I don't want to do any spoilers on this. And the lead character is played by Lizette Oliveira. And I'm not sure what else she's been in, but they've trusted her with a whole series. So she must be pretty talented. We do have two characters returning so far from the original movies. The first is Justin Bartha, who plays Riley Poole. Now, Riley was the, the sidekick, if you will, in the original two films and provided a lot of the comic relief in the film. So seeing him show up in this, it looks like he's going to be in all 10 episodes. That's pretty cool. So we've got one character. Now, here is where my curiosity as a Freemason gets a little bit piqued. The return of Peter Sadusky, played by Harvey Keitel. This is important because Harvey Keitel's character in the original films was, in fact, a Freemason. Now, this is a, a little bit of a spoiler, but if you haven't seen it by now, I mean, it was 2004, you're going you're to have to catch up a little bit. Uh, Harvey Keitel, at the end of the film, it's revealed kind of subtly, 
well, actually, it wasn't all that subtle. Uh, it's revealed that he was a Freemason. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that clip if we can. So in this clip, we've got Nicolas Cage here who is portraying Benjamin Gates. He's an, uh, a historian, and he's the one who found the treasure. And he's about to return the Declaration of Independence to the FBI agent, Peter Sadusky, played by Harvey Keitel, who was tracking him. And the two of them have been playing cat and mouse this whole movie, and now they sit down together as, as things have started to settle down. You know, the Templars and the Freemasons believed that the treasure was too great for any one man to have, not even mm -hmm. a king. Aha, there we go. That is Harvey Keitel's Masonic ring from the National Treasure film. And this this is sort of the big aha moment towards the end of the film. It reveals that he's a Freemason. So I'm thinking that since he shows up in the new series, there must be some Masonic element to this. So let's go ahead and jump into the trailer and see if we can see any Masonic clues hidden in the trailer. So let's uh, already go back to the beginning. That starts right off with FBI agent, or maybe he's a retired FBI agent at this point. It's been 20 years. Peter Sadusky, portrayed by the great Harvey Keitel. So let's give it a shot. This holds a clue to a treasure of utmost importance. Well, we're hunting treasure again. We knew that. It's called National Treasure. If this is the same treasure from the first film, well, that means that there definitely is that Masonic tie-in. So there we go. There's one clue, aside from Harvey Keitel. I thought about destroying it a million times. Look at these symbols. In order to prevent it falling into the wrong hand. Okay. Stop right here. I have looked at this bookshelf. I have zoomed in as much as I can to see what the titles of these books are and, and, and all of that. None of them appear to be specifically Masonic texts. It wouldn't be out of character to have, you know, Albert Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry or something like that on this bookshelf. It, it looks like these are just random collections of history books and things like that. A couple of them are in French, so maybe there's some Masonic stuff there. I don't speak French to be able to say, but uh, let's keep going. The Daughters of the Plume Serpent. The Daughters of the Plume Serpent, of course. The Great Daughters of the Plume Serpent. That's a, There's no Masonic thing about that at all. That's, that's just uh, fiction. But uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, here she is, uh, obviously portraying the bad guy. So, moving on. Yeah. So we're talking like an honest to God treasure map. Yeah. Treasure. <gasps> Where did you get that necklace? It was my dad's. Okay. He died when I was a baby. What is, right. it? what is it? Hold on a second. Let's go a little, a little bit further. Aha, right here. Let's back up just a smidge and take a look at this room that they're in. So if you see this floor here, this checkerboard floor, that is very typical of a Masonic Lodge, as are these pews, is what they look like. They're arranged more. So this, I, I have a theory that this is a church that has been dressed up, so to speak, to look like a Masonic Lodge. And uh, I think that's exactly what we're looking at here is a church dressed up to look like a Masonic Lodge. Maybe they put down this checkerboard map. Now, the checkerboard is a Masonic emblem. It's a representation of the ground floor of King Solomon's Temple, which is in the Bible. And uh, that that checkerboard floor is mentioned there. And uh, that is something that is found in not all, but many Masonic Lodges. In Freemasonry, and I've said this on the channel before, especially when we were talking about the lost symbol. A lot of times you have to add the phrase in most cases when you're talking about it because Freemasonry is a little bit like the free parking space in Monopoly. Everybody does it a little bit differently at their house. Some people, they put the luxury tax money in there. Some people, they put the jail money in there. When you land on jail, but you're not in jail in Monopoly, you get the money. So there's all kinds of different ways that, that people have house rules about it. Well, similarly, Grand Lodges around the globe have their own little twists and turns and peculiarities about how they do things. And it's perfectly okay and perfectly acceptable, and we all recognize one another and, and things like that. But... When you're talking about a Masonic Lodge, if I say they all have this checkerboard floor, no, they don't all have it. But here in the United States in particular, 
many, many, many of them do. In fact, I would say that most of them have that checkerboard floor. It's sort of an important symbol. So this is, I think this is supposed to be a Masonic Lodge. Let's keep going, see what else. That's the symbol on your necklace. I know. Uh -huh. whoa, whoa, whoa. Freeze. This symbol is not Masonic. So if you're uh, wanting to put on your tinfoil hat and find masonry under every you know, little rock, this isn't one of them. This looks to be Native American to me, or maybe South American or uh, Latin American, but it is not uh, Masonic, I'll say that. It's, it's an interesting looking symbol. What a fight, what a fight. Oh, oh, oh. Did I miss one in there? A little crazy little box. Well, looks like there's a bunch more symbols on there, including the one that was on her necklace, but none of them jump out at me as being uh, Masonic in nature. What if I told you everything you know about your dad is a lie? A lie. Yep, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we go. Up. Oh, here's another look. I think this is that same room that they were standing in before. I'm not sure about this yet, but this is the checkerboard floor I was talking about. And these two columns, again, very typical of most Masonic lodges, in particular in the United States, because those are representative of the two columns on the front porch of King Solomon's temple. Again, uh, uh, taken from the Bible, the, the two columns there, those two pillars, are found in most, if not all, Masonic lodges in some form or fashion. So this definitely is supposed to be a Masonic lodge. Let's keep going. an important treasure. Oh, 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 it was quick, it was quick, it was quick, but I got it. Up oh, there it is again. Um, but there's a better shot of this. I guess it's supposed to be an altar. Yep, there it is. Okay, there are the square and the compass and the letter G, the most recognized Masonic symbol of them all. Now, um, I don't think very many Masonic lodges have this like magical fiber optic altar. And if this were a real Masonic altar, the square and compass could be carved in the top of it, but you wouldn't see it very often because what would happen is it would be covered up by an actual Bible or other volume of sacred law, depending on the uh, religious uh, preference of the men in that particular lodge, though here in the States, it's almost always the Holy Bible. And the square and the compass would be there. And the, the letter G would not be in the middle of them. It would, those, those two symbols, those two actual tools would be set on top of an open Bible. So definitely there are going to be Masonic elements hidden in national treasure edge of reality, which again starts streaming on Disney Plus in just about a week. So let's see here. Uh, moving on. Important treasure. Here we are again. I'm gonna see if there are there any other clues in here. Take a good look at this if you're a Mason. Are there other clues in here that I'm not seeing? Now see, this. these benches here, that is more typical of a Masonic Lodge layout. What we were looking at before where they were sort of arranged like church pews, not typical of a Masonic Lodge. Masonic Lodges, generally the, the center of the floor is open and the seating is along the sides like this. And this would be called the East. In other words, where the master of the lodge, the guy who's in charge of the meeting, would sit. These two columns would not be here generally. I certainly think it's possible that in some Masonic jurisdictions they might be in the East, but generally those columns are found in the West, which means on the other side of the room from what we're looking at. This could be a square and compass inside that stained glass window. I'm not really sure. And there are two steps here. Generally speaking, a master of a lodge what we would call a worshipful master would be on three steps. So instead of two, two would be indicative of the West. So perhaps this, we are looking what we would say West in a Masonic lodge, but the problem there is then now the square and compasses are pointed in the wrong direction. So, so here's what my theory is. My theory is that this is not an actual Masonic lodge. They have taken a small auditorium or a, a church auditorium or, or something, and they have dressed it up to look like a Masonic Lodge. And it's, at a quick glance, it is passing most of the tests. But when you scratch below the surface a little bit, 
this is pointed the wrong way, these two things are kind of in the wrong place, so on and so forth, it, the illusion falls apart a little bit. So, so either they had a Freemason working with them who deliberately kind of twisted things a little bit, or they did a little bit of research on the internet and got it close enough for Hollywood. So, and I think it's probably column B. I think they, they made it look like what outsiders think a Masonic Lodge looks like after five minutes of research on the internet. So, and I don't mean that to be insulting. I'm just saying if you're a Mason and you stare at this for a few seconds, you can see things are not quite as they should be. So let's go on. Searching for it is dangerous. I know it is. This is cooler than any room on any episode of Cribs I've ever seen. Ben Frank. Ben Frank. Well, let's go back. Let's go back before everything <laughs> fell apart. These glasses are a callback to the first film where Benjamin Gates, played by the great Nicolas Cage, found these glasses hidden inside of a brick on top of Independence Hall in Philadelphia, and they were put there by Ben Franklin himself. So a uh, little callback to the first movie, which is going to be one of the fun things about this series is that they're going to be constantly winking at us and, you know, a little bit of nudge, nudge about things from the first series. So I'm really hoping we get some more cameos besides uh, Riley Poole and Peter Sadusky. I'm really hoping that at some point Nicolas Cage pokes his head in here and, and, or maybe if he's just even in the background, that would be kind of cool. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Glasses. Oh my God. I want that relic. Stop right there. So this person here, this Native American here, this is a Cherokee chief whose name in his native language, I, I'm not going to dare to try and pronounce uh, just for fear of, uh, I don't want to butcher it and and uh, be seen at all as being insulting. Um, it's, uh, but I, I can't pronounce it. But his name in English was Black Coat, and he was a chief of the Cherokee Nation. And this painting, I, I looked this up, and, and I have to tell you that history of Freemasonry and Native Americans in the United States is pretty fascinating. I, I kind of got down that rabbit hole yesterday, and we're going to have to do a whole video on that in the future, but it's too much to get into right here. But needless to say, there are big connections between Freemasonry and Native Americans here in the United States. It's possible that that's what they're going for with uh, this person, with this Cherokee chief, who um, stood for this painting, and this is this is a famous painting of Black Coat is the the guy's name, and you can do a Google image search for this, which is how I figured out who it was. It's possible that this is a Masonic tie-in, and they will reveal it, but I can't prove that just yet. But it was worth mentioning that that history is very fascinating, and I'm hoping we get a chance to cover it here on the channel in in much greater depth. Everything I thought I knew about my dad. My dad. Well, there we go. Back in a Masonic Lodge or the purported Masonic Lodge looking for any more clues. Now, again, here's where at a glance looks OK. You scratch the surface. Not so much. Harvey Keitel, if he were actually the master of a lodge, uh, he would be wearing an apron and not just holding a gavel in the United States and in the vast majority of places he'd be wearing a top hat. So that would be or, or a hat of some kind. And not, not everywhere wears a top hat. They they change it up. Texas has cowboy hats and so on. But everybody, for the most part, the master wears a hat when he's in lodge. This That would mean that this would be the east. Again, we'd have to have a square and a compass and the letter G uh, above it there. So perhaps we're looking west. I, it's not a Masonic lodge. It's dressed up to look like a Masonic lodge, but I don't think it is. My whole family, for that matter, is a crazy riddle that... Let's see there. No, not a Masonic cipher that I'm familiar with. Now, possible that in another language it's some, something Masonic? Sure, but I'm not sure what language that is. And by the way, if anybody has some of the answers to this, so if you if you know what some of these things are, if you know... If you see a symbol that I miss, please, by all means, drop it in the comment section below. I'm, this is all, um, I'm, I've watched it a couple of times and gone through a few things, but most of it, 
I'm going to be very honest with you and tell you either I know or I don't know right now. That can only be solved by finding this treasure. Trust no one. Trust no one. There we have the all-seeing eye, the eye of providence as it's called, which... A lot of times people think that the Eye of Providence has been a Masonic symbol for, for centuries, and it really has not been a Masonic symbol for all that long. About 200 years, it's been a part of the Masonic fraternity. The Eye of Providence and the Pyramid and the Triangle and the Incomplete Pyramid, all those, those things, Freemasonry has adopted them, but they started out as part of other traditions. So um, Masonic, yes, but also part of other cultures, other traditions, so we can't claim it exclusively. So that could actually be leading us down a, a whole other path. What do you think? Did you see something in here that I didn't see? Do you have a question about one of the symbols, one of the little set pieces? Thought this would be a fun way to whet our appetite ahead of the series release a week from today, December 14th. It is a two-episode streaming release so we'll get a little little bonus and get two episodes at once and i think after that they're going to release it weekly but i'm definitely going to check it out it's on disney plus as i said and if you're a parent you almost certainly have disney plus for the kids so this could be a, a fun thing to watch so if you're interested in masonry if you're a freemason yourself Let's all tune in and watch this, and week by week, we'll kind of go through this and see exactly what Masonic symbols we might find, and again, say, figure out what it's being used for in the show, and then talk about what it really means to Freemasons. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining us. I hope you will tune in to National Treasure Edge of History and watch as we watch and have a little bit of fun with some of these Masonic symbols. In the meantime, I'm Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree KCCH, Scottish Rite Freemason. Don't forget, give us that thumbs up. Really would appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and love to have you comment below. We will catch you next time right here on the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry channel.